everybody. So, Um, I'm Catherine Chappelle. My sister goes as Lisa Chapel. She's our patron, and you may have seen Lisa on the video screen from the Creative New Zealand video just um, earlier. So keep it in the family. Touch Compass is a dance company that um, I pioneered many years ago now, 15 years ago. And it wasn't a company that I set out to go, I'm creating an integrated dance company. Um, it was a sort of a, an organic process. Um, I did a form of dance called contact improvisation. And it's a partnering form where you rely on sensation and listening to your partner. And finding a way, it's almost like improvising with music. You jam together through a set of skills. When I was in um, America studying this form, I met other people who were doing it, but at that stage in the 1990s, I wasn't really ready. Um, five years later, I was, and I met someone who introduced me to one of our dancers, Jesse Steele, who has Down syndrome. And I went and did some more study in, in the States and did about a three-day workshop in New York. I had to be on wheels, on rollerblades, and there was somebody in a wheelchair. And since I hadn't rollerbladed before, I was sort of feeling very uncoordinated. But by the third day I was managing and came back and tried to start um, teaching integrated dance over here. And when there isn't anything happening in that area, it's quite hard to know how to start and how to actually access people. So I started giving lectures and using videos, footage from um, other dance companies in um, England called Kanduko. And I'd give a lecture and then suddenly just grab someone who was watching and say, come and demonstrate with me. And one of the guys that did demonstrate with me, Rodney Bell, who was one of our um, founding members, is now dancing in San Francisco in a, a dance company over there called Axis Dance Company. Uh, so it was a really slow beginning, and eventually we got people from workshops. We had enough to create a workshop series for a year and a half. I went back and did a three-week training in integrated dance in America with Alita Alessi and danceability. And Coming back, it was a lot easier to integrate the, what I already knew. Um, and a lot of what we do is working with intuition. And it's interesting, even talking about venues and making things accessible, a lot of it is common sense and intuition. And if you don't know, as Richard said, just ask. Um, we have some great stories about being in venues. And it's interesting, I, I do wonder how accessible all the venues were backstage. Um, we've had some doozies of having wheelchairs going past and sort of colliding with um, catering trolleys in our backstage crossover and dancers having to go all the way outside the building right round to the toilets and then come back again. And we're wondering why they're not on stage with the dress rehearsal and it's like, where have they gone? So um, we uh, fully support anyone who's trying to make their building accessible. One of the things that Touch Compass does is um, we really look to embrace the human spirit and really to honour that and work with a sense of authenticity and just a sense of listening, listening to um, the actual performers and we have to work together at something that we can't just be um, have an ego and work by ourselves. Um, one of the hurdles um, we find is a time factor. Um, just the time it takes for people to get into the rehearsal room or into the venue, um, access issues, travel issues, um, if we're touring it's quite a lot of um, extra work. Um, one of the things we did start off, somebody gave me a harness, um, a couple of harnesses before they went overseas and that was just at the stage where I was about to do a show, our first show called Touch Compass and suddenly we were doing aerial work but the, we got given a studio to use for free and we didn't have any funding at that stage, it was like $5,000 or something. So we were really pulling money from everywhere. And this venue was up um, a stairwell, three flights of stairs. And we had three women my size in the company at that stage who were non-disabled. And so we carried Rodney, who was paraplegic, on my back up three flights of stairs. We broke down a very heavy electric wheelchair that had two 20 kilo batteries on either side, so we sort of powered up. Um, then we lifted Lucy up one foot at a time up the stairs and it took about 
20 minutes the first time and she got it down to 7 minutes over a period, of a rehearsal period. Um, so it took us half an hour to actually just get into the room, let alone rehearsing. Going down was a lot faster. <laughs>
ground and we really try to work hard to make that happen. The only thing is with our disabled dancers, there's no training ground in New Zealand and so they get training on the spot and sometimes they may only be with us a short time and suddenly they're on stage so it um, creates a little bit of discrepancy between the dancers and over the years we've worked really hard and through support from Creative New Zealand and other funding bodies we've managed to get a lot of time to work on training uh, and to try and even out that discrepancy and eventually hopefully having a training ground for people with disabilities. Um, people ask me what the name Touch Compass is and where it came from. Um, in 1997 I wanted to do our first season and suddenly I was doing a grant application for Creative New Zealand and I had to have a name. <laughs> so out comes the thesaurus and I, the, the word um, touch naturally relates to the um, contact improvisation that I do and all the work, necessary um, relationships that that um, evokes. And then um, compass was just the sort of the direction of touch and working in multi-directions and working um, yeah, being touched in all directions, <laughs> both physically and emotionally. <laughs> um, so that's sort of where the name came from, and it stuck. So it was the, initially the title for our first show, and then became the name of the company. Um, one of the things that we are trying to do with the company is to sort of change the um, classical aesthetics of what people perceive dance to be, and also just change people's perceptions of um, that anybody can dance. And when we have people with um, disabilities in the company, we sort of like to work with the, their word ability and put the dis aside. And um, I tend to try and work with people's strengths, so we see what people can do, and then we work from there, and then push incredibly hard. Um, because the expectation with this work is that it's, oh, it's community or it's not so... Professional. So for us the big key is to be making the work really professional so that people can't, um, it can't take away from them actually seeing a performance and actually entering the show. So when a lot of time people do come along and they perceive that they might get dragged along by somebody who um, says, oh it's great, come along, but they really don't want to be there. And then after a while they completely forget that someone in the show might have a disability and they just taken away by the choreography and the staging. So that's really exciting that we can transport people and also um, a big part of our role is you know, educating people around disability and just taking away that fear because it doesn't, um, once you're involved in it, it's obviously not as frightening once you know um, what to do. Um, yeah, so hurry up to it, you're about to do this soon. Well, you can see up there we've got um, quite a few works under about 33 works, um, eight documentaries, eight Tempo Dance Festival um, awards, four short films, one um, 10th anniversary book, um, 45 to 50 dancers, I actually think it's over 50 dancers now, 17 choreographers and three directors. So a lot of time we work with um, directors and do a dance theatre work, so um, it has that element of integration, of mixing... Um, genres and also obviously our aerial work has been very um, predominant right from the very beginning. Uh, just recently I received the Choreographic Fellowship for Creative New Zealand and I've been trying to combine contact improvisation and aerial bungee. So that's our latest foray and uh, that'll be premiered next week in Auckland at our 15th anniversary season at Kew. So um, that's sort of just another uh, development of our aerial work and it, it's been quite an exciting process. <laughs> So um, I'll hand over to Karen and she can talk a little bit about the evolution of our brand and how that's developed recently. Hi, I'm Karen Fraser Payne, the uh, General Manager. And um, so what happened next in, uh, in terms of, of the logo and the brand Touch Compass? Uh, annually the company, um, we hold a strategic planning session. And so in September 2011 we carried out our normal um, planning session. But it, it got a little bit different, um, and this time um, we um, had the help of Andrew McIntyre um, with the support of Creative New Zealand. And now the strategic planning session, we always invite um, a range of people with a range of backgrounds, and that goes from the board to the dancers to advisors to dance. And in this instance, for the first time, we actually brought on 
brought on board a, a design company, a company called Studio Alexander, who we had started working with. I had uh, worked with them in a previous life at Auckland Airport, and um, fortunately Grant Alexander could see the benefits of touch comps and um, was willing to support the company. So we had a variety of, of views, and um, so what, why did we, what was the key point of this, um, this strategic planning session was, um, was to find, was to uh, examine the brand, but because we always had this continual discussion and tension about how we should look, what, should there be a wheelchair in the picture, should there not be a wheelchair in the picture, should, um, how much do we talk about disability, or are we about social change, or are we about the artistry? So, uh, so we, um, yeah, press the next one. Oh. Okay, so that's, uh, so um, we, we had um, four um, key, key areas that we're going to cover. Um, what was our core premise? Who are we? How is disability articulated or is it not? How is the art articulated? Were we an arts organisation or a disability organisation? How did we explain ourselves in language, imagery, values, the art? What was the brand essentially? And what were our touch points in the performance about the disability, about were we social change agents, about perceptions about disability, and about the language that we used? And how fast were we moving as an organisation against society's um, perceptions of disability and the arts? And what was our key point of difference? Disabled or non-disabled, unique bodies, unique movements, challenging perceptions about who can dance and what is dance. Those were the core things that we, we were going to cover in this planning session. And this is um, help, um, Andrew helped create this diagram to simplify some of the issues that arose from the discussions with a view to making connections clear and, and uncovering issues. For example, were we a new art form or a new genre of dance? Um, what were the typical misconceptions about the company? What was our potential? Some people already had a percep perception about disability and about social change and also about art. But there was also quite a lot of people that we know are already uh, are stuck in traditional ways of thinking about disability and art. And we wanted to establish what our audiences were saying and what really resonated with them. So we needed to define our own visual and verbal language. And so, what, uh, one of, so this is an activity that we carried out at this workshop. We um, broke into teams of people. And, and we had um, four key... Um, four key statements that we... Um, had to come up with the answers uh, uh, to the answers for. The first one was positive reactions. And these are the, the statements that came out of that, that workshop. Maybe I, maybe I could dance. I didn't see the disability. Wow, people with dis disabilities can dance. I cried. Wow, that was intense. So these, out of these statements came impact statements such as dissolving disability. I had to see it to understand it. If only society was integrated so seamlessly. And then we came up with some adjectives about the work. Raw, real, bold, groundbreaking, powerful, emotional, inventive. And then we came up with impact statements um, with those objectives, adjectives. Extraordinary bodies. De deconstruct your imagination. Find your humanity. We will re revolutionise your thinking. And then we also had to look at the negative assumptions about the company. Uncomfortable and confronting. It's a freak show. Those handicapped dancers over there. Low expectations. It's, rehab uh, it's rehabilitation and therapy. It's not really art. It's sympathy art. And then out of those negative um, assumptions, we came up with the negative um, impact statements. And what people might say, for example, when we approach a venue, we can't get you on the stage, the wheel, the, the, it's not accessible for wheelchairs. No, I'm sorry, I can't sell tickets, it's not good tickets, it's not good enough. It's not entertainment, it's really just a charity. So taking that um, huge amount of information, um, we came up with, um, we worked with the design company 
to come up with um, a, new, a new logo, taking uh, the concept that Catherine had with the touch and the compass. We took one of the arrows from the, from the compass in which um, Studio Alexander created the triangle and the pyramid. And we also came up with the, with the byline Dance Beyond Difference. So this took some time from September through to um, just uh, a month ago where we've come up with our new brand. And just um, as part of the process, um, we worked collaboratively with Stu Alexander. They, um, we did a little performance for um, the staff at, at the workshop. And they also videoed the um, special photo shoot that we um, carried out. Upstairs anymore. And um, just just an introduction to the new show and the cast and crew. That um, some people have said this this looks like a new um, reality TV television program. So yeah, please do come along. Um, so in launching the new brand, we're uh, launching the show. So we're wrapping the communications around that. And we've done AO billboards um, in, the, in Auckland to, to sell the story. We've obviously got the brochures. Uh, we've got some badges that uh, have got the Dance Beyond Difference. And in the future, Catherine um, can talk about Mark Brew. Uh, <clears throat> I'll talk about Mark Brew because the dancers are just about to come and show you his work. Mark is a, a, a disabled choreographer from the UK. He was a non-disabled um, dancer for many years in a dance company and he had an accident and he um, now uses a wheelchair. But the exciting thing about Mark is he's lived in both worlds so he really, really worked the dancers hard. They couldn't get away with a thing because he knew exactly what he could do from both sides. Um, he's a brilliant um, technician and he's really pushed the dancers to their limit. The piece is called Run and there's four dancers in it. Addis, um, Georgie and, sorry, mental blank, Suzanne and Dan. Um, oh, on the right hand side, the upside down photo is my uh, new aerial bungee work called Spring. It's been an interesting process making the work because the dancers have only been able to sustain about 20 minutes at a time on the bungee. So we've been having to do a lot of watching videos, analysing it, and then finally going back and saying, OK, we're going to do this, like, da, 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 and then get up and quickly do it and before you have to pull them down again. So um, that's another thing, um, a time factor that gets taken up. And this is our 15th anniversary um, poster, just um, acknowledging the words and our new program. So it's a three-dimensional program that the uh, punters can actually come in and put together themselves and take away with them as a little wee memento. We hope it works. Do you like it? <laughs> so 
Welcome to the Run Dancers.